Recently, America marked its 239th Independence Day, the birth of what many consider the greatest nation on earth. But as Paul Strand reports, many Americans worry that the country has fallen so far from its historic values that it's doomed, unless it makes a serious U-turn. This time of year, Americans are used to celebrating the nation's birthday and its greatness, but they may soon be mourning its downfall. That's the conclusion of researcher George Barna and historian David Barton in their book, U-Turn, Restoring America to the Strength of Its Roots. These authors say that the U.S. is entering its own version of the Dark Ages, that any civilization that's gone where America is headed now has gone to ruin. The founders gave us an amazing foundation, and for us to trample on it and say, we're going to build a new one is, is folly. The authors point out those early Americans were shaped by the Bible and a Judeo-Christian worldview. They believed everybody should read through the Bible cover to cover once a year. That's what we did in school. That's what we did in spiritual life. That's what political leaders did. Not today. We can't even get Christians to read that word. Today, only 30% of Christians read the Bible and less than 10% from cover to cover. And it shows. Only 9% of born-again Christians have a biblical worldview. Only 51% of pastors have a biblical worldview. It's led to a complete change in values over 240 years. Then, service to others ruled the day. Your order of responsibilities is God, country, and family. And so that's part of the biblical thinking they had, which is why the Founding Fathers were told, and specifically taught in schools, we have their textbooks, if someone comes to you and say, we need you to run for office, you're not allowed to say no. You said, I will run. Because, as they point out, your life doesn't belong to you. Today, it's all about me. Now we're just worried about comfort and experiences and entertainment and security. That's led to a world of things that can pile up the kind of debt that can kill a country. The average American family, they're looking usually at a, at a mortgage debt of about 130000 They're usually looking at a credit card debt of about 21000 They're looking at a car debt of about 23000 a college loan debt of about 24000 And so we're so far in debt that we tolerate it in others. Like our federal government. Where we are right now, it will take 107 years of the full production of the American economy to pay off the debt we have right now. We are at a point now where the 60 percent of Americans receive more from the government than what they put in. You can't sustain that. Compare that to what Thomas Jefferson said. We can live in debt and extravagance, but we'll be in slavery, or we can be free, but we have to use frugality. George Washington said, avoid occasions of expense. If you want to stay out of debt, just quit spending. And so the Founding Fathers very, very, very clear that what would destroy a nation is debt. So where does that indicate America's headed? Into the ash heap of history. Reverend Sam Rohr invited Barna and Barton to address this gathering of the Pennsylvania Pastors Network because he wants a different outcome. God's judgment on America and his hand of judgment, which is very obviously here, will put us down on our knees until we look up. Church folks often say, look at what those people are doing to wreck our country. But Barn and Barton found in their research over and over again that church people are just as guilty as their government, as secular people, of the same kind of ruinous behaviors that are taking the nation down. And in a country that between 78 80 percent say they're Christian, but only 34 percent believe in absolute moral truth. Barna, on a regular basis, asks Christians and non-Christians about 70 moral categories. And these days, he's finding no substantive statistical difference between Christians and non-Christians when it comes to most moral issues. Stop pointing the finger and look at ourselves and say, are we really the church that Christ died on the cross for? Rohr says the church should be confessing to God. We are the problem. We have walked away from you, and the culture has followed us, not the other way around. Barna says today's Americans believe they're smarter than the founders, maybe because of education and technology. But the founders had that biblical foundation. They didn't have all the things that we think are necessary to have a sophisticated society today. But the key isn't sophistication. You know, it, it's wisdom, it's discernment, it, it, it's love, it's grace. And so until we get back into God's plan and know what his plan is, we'll never get the nation back to where it needs to be. Today we think that mankind has evolved. We're smarter and wiser than those people who founded the country hundreds of years ago. And yet they were so wise that they founded the greatest nation on the earth, while today's generation are well on their way to losing it. Paul Strand, CBN News, reporting from Lancaster Bible College.